Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sid Schumer from PlayStation Blog, and I've got my bud Jason Blundell. Hey, you Sid. are the Zombies Director. I am. Your biggest day one Zombies uh, offering ever coming to Black Ops 4 later tonight when it launches on PlayStation Store. Yep. And we're going to have a lot more to show <coughs> just a minute, but <coughs> we, uh, we are here live at Treyarch, and we want to give everyone sort of a new look at what's coming tonight when Black Ops 4 launches on PlayStation Store. And we've got some very cool prizes, actually, Jason. Oh, yes? Everybody. Yes, oh, yes. Please share. Uh, including this bad boy here. This is the mystery box. Actually, let me uh, give this. We're not gonna, the batteries are not in. The batteries are not in. All right. Well, batteries we'll have to swap them. those out. But... <laughs> Check out PlayStation.com slash BO4 because we've got some great ways to win awesome stuff like this. We've got um, giveaways. We've got freebies. Uh, you can enter to win. Uh, look at this thing. This That's one nice. comes with a PS4 Pro. Wow. So all of that uh, from for folks in the U.S., just check out PlayStation.com slash BO4 and you can enter for a chance to win. Can I enter that? Is that uh, I don't know what the rules and regulations are around uh, employees. Sure, sure yeah, sure I won't say anything. Yeah, we're good, we're good. There's also some freebies here. Uh, we've got some avatars. We've got, <clears throat> I think there's some themes. Yeah, here we go. That's a fetching theme there. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, so this is all this great stuff you can get at PlayStation.com slash BO4. Sweepstakes Wonderful. you can enter, freebies you can grab right now. But over the next hour, we're going to give all of you a new look at what's coming to Black Ops 4 tonight when it launches on PlayStation Store. We're only what, like 11 hours away. Yep. Does that yep. sound about right? Exactly, I've never been yep. good at math, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jason, I wanted to start particularly with zombies. Yes. You know, such a hallmark of Treyarch. You guys are so, so great with zombies. Yes. And it's awesome to see you back in the saddle. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about, just broadly speaking, uh, very high level, what are the goals for zombies this high time? High level, it's such a, such a hard level to set on with, yeah. with the zombies. Um, so high level, we've got two stories being told. There's the Ether story, that's the 10 year story we've been telling yes. since World at War. Uh, and then we have a new story kicking off, which is the Chaos story. So the, uh, the offerings for day one, including the Black Ops Pass, we've got uh, Nine and Voyage of Despair, they're part of the new Chaos story. Yep. And then we have uh, Blood of the Dead. Mm -hmm. and if you get the Black Ops Pass, then also Classified as well. And we're going to get a look at all those starting right now, including a first look at Classified. Nobody's seen that yet. So thank what? you for letting us uh, behind the veil on that one. Sid, for you, anything. Man. Oh, I appreciate that. I am a huge <laughs> Zombies fan from way back in the day, starting yes. with World at War. I've mm -hmm. always loved Treyarch, and I've always loved what you guys do. But right now, I want to check out some gameplay from Nine. Wonderful. Yeah, so this is a bit of a departure thematically for Treyarch, yeah? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's such fun to, to, to turn the tables on stuff, right? Let's go to brightness, let's go to light, let's go yeah. to uh, different kind of spatial uh, reasoning than we've kind mm -hmm. of done before. You know, you start off in this kind of big arena as you're seeing there on, on the screen. Uh, bigger space, um, deceptive also. Mm. People kind of get lulled into a false sense of security. <laughs> thinking, thinking, oh, I've got tons of space. I'm okay, well, watch out for those fire traps. Um, and uh, there's something special about that fire as well, so have a, Is have there? a look closely about that. Oh, that's an exclusive um, that's an uh, teaser uh, there oh, from Jason. That's yeah. too early in the conversation. <laughs> um, but uh, you have these kind of four towers around the space and then kind of huge catacombs underneath. Uh, people keep on saying kind of a Roman Colosseum. Yeah. That would be an assumption. Oh, so a Colosseum, absolutely. But um, okay, I would say uh, look look closer. There's uh, there's other clues and uh, uh, narrative is obviously a, a huge kind of backbone of the zombie mode. It's the kind of and, and this really kind of the zombie mode really pioneered a way of telling stories that was so different to, to other ways we've done before. And as we've gone through the different iterations through the Black Ops series, I feel we've got more and more confident about how to tell more complex stories, more complex narratives in this non-linear way. Um, and so definitely the, the learnings of those past 10 years have flowed directly into, into the care story. And nine is a prime example of um, 
narrative that is right in front of you, even though you may not be able to see it. You got, and you guys are the masters at this. I mean, we've talked so many times in the past. Uh, we've done live streams, we've done videos, yeah. and, and you've just you've been so great with the fans. I mean, there's you guys have layers upon layers upon layers of secrets in there. Uh, I mean, has the has the strategy shifted this time? Are you uh, taking well, a different approach? A little bit. So. Um, it's definitely a more mature strategy in terms of how we're telling the stories and how we're, we're, we're putting our layers in. Uh, we've always, like you say, we've always had these kind of different strata, you know, the ones that a casual player can find, you know, the ones that, you know, people who are just starting to try can find, and then two other layers for the hardcore guys. There's the ones that we think are going to take a long time to find, and the ones where you have to be borderline insane to, to find, right? Um, so. There's oh, that. Oh, what was that? That's Sorry, the, that's, the, that's the homunculus. Oh. That's the homunculus. That's the chaos story equivalent of the monkey bomb. But he's um, oh. he's a, a violent little chappy, and um, <laughs> he loves nothing more than jumping on people's heads and stabbing them with his bone sword. Um, and but, this is uh, the first time I'm seeing this footage, so I'm kind sure. of reacting uh, <laughs> like, like the rest of you. I, I'm not totally sure what I'm looking at, but that's, it part, looks, of, that's part of the plan. Actually. It, it looks awesome. <laughs> Thank um, you. You know, and we're seeing a lot of special effects. I mean, this is almost like kind of this big, epic blockbuster take. Yeah. I almost feel like on well, the crowd thing. reacts as well. So oh, if you're playing, they start kind of going crazy. And if they're doing things that you like, you get positive things. Oh, that's awesome. If, they, if you're doing things they don't like, they may be throwing like things like poop at you. When can I play this, Jason? <laughs> I, um, I, October 12th. <laughs> October 12th, officially. It's tonight, isn't it? It is uh, tonight, uh, yeah. Technically, at least yeah. if you get it on PlayStation Store. That's awesome. That's a homunculus there. Uh, yeah. This is looking terrific, man. This is Thank just you one much. level. Uh, this and, is one tower, one level of one tower right here. And traditionally, you guys launch with one level, but yeah. this time it's four? It's four, yeah. It's, with the Black Ops Pass, yeah. It's, I mean, and this is, uh, this is something we felt very passionate about, which was we obviously wanted to bring back... There's so many questions on the Ether story. Mm -hmm. We had to kind of go to, to Blood of the Dead. And when we released Chronicles, I think I talked to you at the time, um, you can see that the community has got a real passion for that story. Obviously, it has for 10 years. And so we wanted to put Blood in there. And then Classified allows us to bring back the Ultimus crew. But we also wanted to start this new story, the Chaos story, um, because we had so many great ideas sitting on one side that it was like, we could jam it into the Ether story, but it's probably better if we just start this new story and get going. So, so that's why uh, All right. I did that. Well, let's take a new look uh, at some new footage. Yes. And I want to check out Voyage of Despair. So this yeah. is number two uh, yeah. of four maps coming day one, if you've got the Black Ops Pass. Uh, and this one, again, thematically very ambitious, yep. set on board the HMS Titanic. I was corrected recently, the, the oh. RMS Titanic. Oh, I made well, that, I made that mistake. I got, look, I got that off the Call of Duty website, so <laughs> I'm sticking with that. We need, to, we, need to, we need to speak to legal somehow, right? Um, yeah, so Voyage of Despair. Obviously, I'm really into really cheery titles for map names. Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist, definitely. Um, so, yeah, this is... Um, this is a new Chaos story, and the Chaos story is slightly different to the Ether story in the fact that the Ether story, if that was actually happening, all the governments of the world would be very sensitive to this zombie outbreak. In the Chaos story, um, things occur in locations where it's not easily documented, mm. and when the trial finishes, it's also cleaned up and cleans up people's memories of that as well. I see. So that allows us to kind of stick with traditional history, our understanding of history, while also kind of going to crazy places. Yeah, you can kind of, uh, gives you a foundation to build off of. I Absolutely. Mean, um, you know, we see this in other great works of fiction as well. So uh, good to see you guys are Thank sort you. of stepping up your narrative game here. So Well, the multiverse was so mind-bendingly complicated. We said, okay, let's keep going crazy over here, and then let's tell a more structured narrative on this other side. <laughs> so I, by, I, when I say structured, by the way, I put air quotes around that. Exactly. It's our storytelling. Exactly, so. with uh, gore, gore and blood and all the rest. So, yeah. Uh, here we are. So this is this is a new cast, and these, yes. these new characters are, uh, well, they're a little different than what we've seen before. Yeah, Scarlet, who's the leader, uh, Bruno, <clears throat> Diego, and Shaw. And... Um, you know, whenever you introduce a new cast, there's obviously an intrepidation there. There's a, there's a nervousness on our side, which is, okay, how are the fans going to respond to it? Um, so you've got to set them up as a, as a kind of broad palette, allow the community to kind of get used to them, and then you start showing the extra kind of depth. You know, if anyone thought back to the Primus crew, or even the Ultimus crew for that matter, um, if you judge them on day one, it'd be very hard. But this kind of love for characters and storytelling needs time to kind of mature and grow, you know, and grow. So, um, 
we're, we're sitting here with bated breath, looking at uh, how the community is going to respond, and uh, uh, hopefully they grow to, to, to love them like we do. Yeah, I have no doubt. Uh, and I, I love sort of the, the just wonderful atmosphere, and that's something I always uh, uh, pops to mind immediately when I think about Treyarch's take on zombies. I mean, you guys were the originators of this formula. It is a formula you know very, very well, and you, you are never content to rest on your laurels. You no. always want to push it forward. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, just some of the new features that folks are going to see on this map. I think we literally don't have time on this stream for me to go through them all. Too, because, too many? Because, too many? Every, well, you know, here's what I'd say is that every, every component that makes up the core experience or zombie experience for us has been touched in some way. Yeah. And not just touched for the sake of it, it's like a rippling effect. So when you make a decision, you know, if you're doing good, good design, you then look at the effect of that upon every other subsystem. By starting Black Ops 4 and saying, let's look at everything we have, put it on the table, and look at the interrelationship, which we've never done. You know, for 10 years of zombies, we just added things yeah. and tried to kind of craft as we could. Black Ops 4, really, we sat down and said, okay, we're not doing anything for a moment. We're just going to analyze everything we have on the table and make it all work and sit together. And so I think when the zombie community plays Black Ops 4 for the first time, they're going to take a moment to adjust. Um, but I would say don't be rash because look, the other thing, the other str the new strategies, the new ways of uh, combining things, decisions that need to be made, um, will lead to, uh, I think, a more vibrant community, a more uh, engaged community, and a more strategic community as well. So. Um, it's very exciting to see. Well, I mean, the last time you guys were, were kind of uh, in this situation was yeah. with Black Ops 3. Yeah. And uh, escapes me, uh, the launch map for that was called... Shadows of Evil. Shadows of Evil. Oh, <laughs> that's probably my favorite zombies <laughs> map of all time. <laughs> and it was, it was at the time, the most ambitious. Yeah. So I know for you, you folks at Treyarch, that was sort of a moment where you were really trying to push this thing forward. Oh, yeah. It was... Um... <clears throat> you know, it was a celebrity cast, um, but it was it, it had that spatial complexity that we it hadn't did. really gone to before. And, and a then, density to it. It was really it was yeah. narratively complex in a way we hadn't seen. Now it's you know, and, and we made the decision to make it hard. We actually kind of <clears throat> excuse me, gone up on the kind of difficulty level. Yeah. Um, and this time we have maps, you know, like Voyage. Voyage is probably one of the harder maps in the, oh, in, in the day one selection because. You've got very tight corridors, uh, very, very cluttered, right? Um, it's also, it can be difficult to kind of navigate around. You have to learn it, so you can't just jump in and go, I want to know where I am at all times. Part of that is the complex, the visual and, and structural complexity of the, of the map. Uh, that's why we've also introduced uh, difficulty levels back in Black Ops 4 yes. and custom mutations, which yes. means that... And, and bots as well. As I was like, going to say bots. You can actually yeah. play this. It was always a little tricky to try and solo it. Yeah. I, a friend of mine back home is incredible at soloing all the old zombies maps. He could get insanely far with that. But sure. I think the rest of us mortals would rather have <laughs> some backup, right? So we've got bots, yes. um, and we've got these these custom mutators, which is you guys are basically going to be evolving zombies again and again and again as time goes on. So on day one, I, I can't remember the exact number, I think it's like 100, 110 different sliders and options that you can change about the game from day one. So you can go in there and say, okay, I just want all bosses. Don't give me any zombies, give me all bosses. Or change my health to be you know, whatever you want. Or change the speed of the zombies. Or change the spread technique. So one thing that the community members do, it's called training, where they'll move the zombies around without yeah. killing them. Yep. Well, there's a spread value that you can change and then uh, say goodbye to that strategy. Yeah. Um, or you can make it better. You can make it so you can train them a lot easier, right? So, um, but hundreds of options that you can go in and play with and change um, to allow you to to make the kind of difficulty in the game experience that you want to have. That's perfect. Uh, we've got more to show. That was just two of four uh, maps uh, for zombies shipping yes. on day one with Black yeah. Ops 4. I just want to give a quick plug again, playstation.com slash BO4. Uh, there are sweepstakes that you can enter. There are prizes that you can uh, enter to win. There's some giveaways, some free stuff on there. So check that out, some good stuff there. Uh, but I want to talk about Blood of the Dead. Blood of the Dead. So this is uh, map number three for zombies, launching yep. day one yep. with Black Ops 4. Yes. Now this is a bit of a re-envisioning of a fan favorite. Um, yeah, it's so it's so difficult to talk about it because you could say a remaster, re-envisioning. It's just another point in the timeline. It just I happens see. to be that we're at the same physical location, mm. but we're now uh, exploring totally different parts of the map. Actually, interestingly enough, when we made Mob of the Dead way back when in Black Ops 2, 
This is actually all the map we made, and we actually cut it back for Mob of the Dead. Oh, really? So this is actually going back to what we originally... This is the director's cut. This is the director's cut. How but about I think, that? I think people will look at it, because I think you might say, well, oh, you know, it's just a, a remaster of Mob of the Dead. Everybody I think people are going to experience it and say, this is a totally different experience. How about that? Um, because of the mechanics, because of the decisions made, obviously the narrative is absolutely brand new because it's a different point in the timeline. Um, it ties in directly to the experiences that were happening in, in Black Ops 3. Um, it's, I, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but I, I will say that um, uh, coming back now with the power of modern hardware, the yep. power of the new lighting engine, the new mechanics on top of that, um, everything just uh, brings this map to life in a way that we really didn't imagine when we first started kind of going at it. We were like, okay, how's this all going to kind of play out? We knew obviously the story we wanted to tell. We'd actually planned it back in uh, I think at the beginning of Black Ops 3, we'd already kind of played really? this one. Um, you guys are diabolical geniuses with these zombies. Now, this gave me some major <laughs> flashbacks here, and uh, sure. I, I remember uh, the original sort of take on this, mm -hmm. uh, a different point in the timeline, like you mentioned, yeah. had a uh, sort of a, 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 a nemesis that yes. you're sort of dealing with early in the map, played yes. by a famous uh, director. Yes. Is there an analog of... of oh, no, you're, you're thinking of Call of the Dead. Oh, I'm thinking of Call of the Dead. I There's know, too many of the dead. <laughs> I know, and that's a tradition I keep going. It's just like, <laughs> every so often I do an of the dead, and, you know, Shadows of Evil is going to be of the dead, and okay. I, was like, I was like, we can't do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to mix up Sid on these uh, live streams here. Yeah, so um, uh, this one has um, has the warden running around. This is the prison, yeah. So he's got, he's got the kind of baton yeah. and kind of runs around and... Um, I mean, I recognize pieces of this, but some yeah. of this looks totally new. Absolutely. This, this area here that we're seeing on screen is um, completely new. You can, this is the courtyard area. And when we went out to b build this map, we actually went there. And we went around and measured everything. That's awesome. And took pictures of all the stuff, recorded sure they, all the I'm sounds. I'm sure they love that. I'm right? sure they love that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, this allowed us to get a certain level of authenticity. And obviously, Alcatraz doesn't look like this right now. So if you want to go and visit that, it uh, looks a lot cleaner than, than our representation. I but hope so. um, we our tax uh, dollars at work. Exactly. We we took the map and then set fire to it and then put lots of dead bodies around. Yeah, you know, the, <laughs> the usual kind of zombie thing. Um, but um, starting off with that basis gives it a kind of strange credibility. Even if you've never been there, uh, it feels real. It feels like there's you know this. It makes spatial sense, and that's a kind of key part. No matter what we do, however fantasy we go, however crazy we go in our imagination. Everything has to have a credibility. Um, and then when you put the horror aspect on, I like to think of it as horror light. Because if you make a truly terrifying game that's actually scary, you don't want to keep going back to it time and time again. No. Um, so what it is, is it kind of, it gives you the giggles of horror without the kind of like, oh, I, can, I can't deal with this, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So it's, there's, a, um, there's a delicate balance there. There is. And, and we've, we, at times we've stepped over, but I feel like, your imagination is better than any kind of visual or sound. So what we're trying to do is give the kind of horror aspect that you will conjure in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the that's the the line you're trying to go to all the time. All right. If you're just joining us, uh, we've been ch chatting here with Jason Blundell. You are the Treyarch director of Zombies. You've been with the company for a long time. Yeah. Kind of spearheading all those great zombie games over the years. So. Thank you. Um, We've seen three of four maps. Yes. We've seen nine. We've seen Blood of the Dead. Yes. And Voyage of Despair. Yeah. But one map uh, has been teased. It's been hinted. <laughs> it comes with the Black Ops pass. It comes yep. day one with yep. the pass. Yep. Um, but not really much is known about it, and that's classified. I said the clue was in the title. Uh -huh. yeah. um, <laughs> we're yes. gonna declassify it now. This, this now is the time, is it? Yeah. Um, yes, classified. We're we're following the Ultimus Gang. So that's the OG gang from uh, from World at War. Mm -hmm. um, they are, uh, they have gone to the Pentagon. Interesting. Now, the Pentagon map was a map called Five. Yes, and Black Ops um, Two. I did, I vividly remember that with that damn mad scientist running around. Yeah, um, and the the intro to IG, IGC, the in-game cinematic to um, the movie at the front. Okay. Um, sorry, too many buzzwords. That, 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 um, that I can I can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, explains where that scientist has gone as well. So the yeah. intro IGC is also a kind of key part of the storytelling. But um, it's really fun to go back with these characters. They're over the top. They break the fourth wall. They're talking to you, sitting on your couch, and giving you stick about you know. Stop! Stop eating chips and start playing the game. You know? <laughs> that's that's the kind of the the, the shtick, and um, it's it's in a key part of the of the story that I think the community will find incredibly interesting. At the, when we released Chronicles in Black Ops Three, we released a timeline, um, and people were already starting speculating, saying, "Well, there's no there's no gap. There's no gap here." You know, uh, yes, there is, uh, <laughs> and uh, we've taken advantage of it, which is where uh, Classified kind of sits, and I'm 
I'm so, being deliberately cryptic with them. All right. Well, yeah. uh, we, we expect nothing less. We're checking yeah. out first gameplay here of Classified. This uh, comes with Black Ops 4 tonight when it launches on PlayStation Store, uh, if you've got the Black Ops Pass. And, uh, so, so and, a, and a key thing to throw in is that the meta systems across all this stuff works regardless of what story you're in and what map you're in as well. Yeah. So, so if you, once you kind of learn the systems and yeah. those decisions, they flow through all maps and all stories. So, so one thing I wanted to point out as well, we, have, we haven't talked about all the many sort of refinements and tweaks and, and upgrades that have come to zombies across the board. We did talk about the mutators and the, the customization options, but yeah, I wanted to talk about, you do have a little bit of control over kind of your starting equipment yeah. now. So you can change your starting weapon. Yeah, that's you can awesome. Change, you can now assign a special weapon. Sweet. Right? Which is like essentially a wonder weapon that you can assign. Awesome. And as you use it, it actually upgrades to three different levels. So the more you use it, the more powerful it gets. Uh, so that's a strategy, and it charges up over time, right? So you've got to, that's part of the strategy. See, this now. is what the people want to know, Jason. So yeah, yeah, I'm giving... Well, by, by people, I mean me, but... Uh. <laughs> so here you go, so you've got, you got that as well. Then you've got special equipment. Yes. Uh, so that would be, you know, it's... It, and then the way that things like grenades and Semtex and other things work now makes them more relevant than just making crawlers. Yes, yeah, see, that's that's huge. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you the insight. That, this, is, this is great. Yeah, because grenades, <laughs> I mean, unless you got, you know... There really wasn't a ton of use outside mm -hmm. the first few rounds in the past. Yep, yep. So you're saying they have a little more utility now. Yeah, come back to it, have a look. All um, right. And um, then we have our perks. That's a big change. Yeah. I'm sure people in the community are like, ah, yeah. change. Yeah, um, change is hard, but it can be very rewarding. Well, here's the thing. And uh, I've noticed some very, very wise people in the community talking about this. And it's exactly the reason why we, we made this decision, which is you know, things like Juggernaut not coming back. Mm -hmm. When you have perks where the only decision is to do that thing, then you shouldn't have it as an option in the map anymore. Yep. If, it, if when you start, you just have to do that because yeah. you have to have it. It becomes a chore, right? It becomes a chore, it becomes things, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not a decision anymore. So with the new system where you have four altars in the Chaos Story or four machines in the, in the Ether Story, you assign the perk to that. That's interesting. And then what I assign is different to what you assign. Yeah, that is very interesting. And we can now start talking about defensive strategies, yes. revive strategies. Offensive strategies. Offensive strategies. Yes. And Thank then, you. And Thank then, you. And then <laughs> where you put them, right? Because yeah. you know where the first machine is, but uh. I may assign a more protective thing uh. you know, on the first one, maybe, or you may put a more offensive thing. Interesting. Um, so, so that's a decision. And then the fourth machine, it, whatever you put in the fourth machine has an added modifier. So everything has a base effect, but the one that you put in the fourth machine has a further modifier. Oh. So that's a decision as well. Now, it really gooses you along to get to that one. It's a risk-reward. Yeah, Classic risk-reward. Now, risk now when you go down, the perks burn off. Oh. So you lose the fourth one first. I see. Right? So okay. that's a decision now. You've got to say, okay, I want the modifier on this one, but I also know as soon as I go down, that's the first one I lose. That is very, um, very interesting. You guys are di diabolical geniuses. <laughs> uh, we are checking out, just for those who might yeah. be joining us, this is uh, PS4 Pro footage. We're seeing uh, Classified. This yep. is the fourth map that launches uh, uh, for zombies with Black Ops 4 tonight, uh, if you've got the Black Ops pass. But it's, uh, it's PS4 Pro footage here. Uh, Jason, I mean... I've got one other thing as well. I, I want to hear it all. Like, this Talismans. is the place. Talismans. Talismans as Tell well. Tell me about Talismans. Well, because we've got Talismans and Elixirs as well. Oh, okay. And literally, the stream's not long enough. Um, <laughs> so Talismans is a pre-match buff that you can assign, mm -hmm. right? And so what that allows you to do is make an influence on the machines or on yourself or on your weapons. And as soon as you go into the match, it burns, but you get that through the whole match. Mm. So that's a talisman. Then you've got elixirs. The closest comparison there would be the gobblegum system. We did I see. Three. Okay. But we've completely revamped that in mm. terms of the skill balance level, what they're doing, and how they interact. So and now, rather than going to a machine, it's just on D-pad. So you can fire it. So you assign it to the different directions on your D-pad, and you can fire them at any time. And then there's a recharge uh, time to then use it again. So what I'm hearing is the most strategic zombies experience Absolutely. to date. The biggest zombies experience to date, if you've got the pass, you get four maps on day one. Yep. I mean, that's like an embarrassment of riches. You're <laughs> going to be releasing more maps, I assume, post-launch at some point. Absolutely, yeah. And then you're basically going to be coming in. We've got these mutators. Are there anything else? You're, is there anything else you're doing to just kind of keep people coming back to the game over the long time? Tons. <laughs> so, Tons, yeah. So, so we have... Um, Oh, I don't even know how I can go through them all. Okay, yeah. we have things like factions. So this is going to be a system that's going to come on in the next yes. couple of months. I remember you, you mentioning this, but you wouldn't tell me anything. No, no, you know, it's, uh, you know we're going to have our secrets set. Yeah. Um, so uh, factions, you can associate yourself with one of them, and then there'll be narrative components that come out, and then rewards also. So we're going to we're gonna drip this in as we kind of go mm. through. Regardless of you, whether you've got the Black Ops Pass or not, this thing is going to be added in. Uh, Treyot custom mutations, so using the mutation system, we're going to actually curate yeah. our own ones. And That's what I was ones. waiting to hear, yeah. So you got those ones. Um, 
gauntlets. We have uh, quests that you're going to go on with multi-stage awesome. round challenges that you awesome. want you to do to, to sign off. Uh, and, and tons more, so yeah. So basically I can just delete everything else off my hard drive, play zombies for, for years. I think that's a good advice, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. I, I'm already there. Uh, cancel all my plans. Uh, <laughs> this is looking great. So this is classified here. This is the first time we're getting a look at this this one. Yeah. And uh, I see, uh, are those our lovable hellhounds that I just saw? Yes, you'll see them, yeah. I mean, so part of the, you know, as we kind of play with our community and that, 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 that this kind of symbiotic relationship between our community and us as developers, um, it's a fun one, which is we, we are playing with them. And although we wanted to do four maps for creative reasons and for story reasons, the interesting thing that developed was, okay, the community can be really divided on where they put their attention and what they do. Yep. Um, and that's actually part of the interest for us. It's like, okay, what's gonna happen? Because we don't know. We don't know where the community is gonna go to. Are they gonna pile onto one? Are they gonna be fragmented? Um, what decisions are they going to make as a community to find the different kind of mechanics and how they interplay? That's all going to take time. So uh, nothing is as it seems and nothing is exactly how it was before. Well, uh, Jason, you guys are the masters at this. And I mean, you're <laughs> stepping your game up big time, which I am uh, awfully pleased by. As thank a you. huge Zombies fan, <laughs> I mean, uh, especially Treyarch Zombies. Love you guys. Love what you do. Uh, thank you so much for giving us this new look at all four maps. And uh, all that launches tonight on PlayStation Store. If you pre-order and preload, you can be playing it tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time. But we've got a lot more coming up. Jason, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. We're going to check out Blackout and Multiplayer, so stay with us. Approaching the drop zone. Play new content first on PS4. Hey everybody, we are back counting down the hours until Call of Duty Black Ops 4 launches tonight on PlayStation Store. Big game, just a lot of innovation this year, frankly. We just heard from Jason Blundell getting into all the zombie stuff. I mean, God, like, as a long-term Zombies fan, I can't believe, like, how much there is there day one. But another one that I want to talk about, it's a big one. It's a big iteration. It's uh, Blackout. What? Blackout. Have you heard I've of Blackout? Never heard of it. All right. We've got David and Dan here from Treyarch. We are at Treyarch right here, counting down the final hours. And I wanted to get into your guys' heads a little bit about Blackout. And I know it's we've got some gameplay place. footage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, we do have, uh, before we dive into that though, I do want to talk about something special uh, that's actually going on right now on Twitch. And it's an opportunity to actually help some veterans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, uh, it's called Code Cod Nation. So I think we've got some information here we're going to put up on screen. But it's an opportunity for folks to get in there, uh, join this stream. They can join it at twitch.tv slash the race. And uh, it's happening right now, actually. Downstairs. So, but, Downstairs. Yeah. Uh, maybe stick with us for a few more minutes here. But it's going on for a couple days here. And every dollar goes to support veterans, which yeah. I think is something cause. we can all get behind. Yes. Yeah. That's an amazing so, uh, But now on with the show, on with the games. And uh, I know that we've got some blackout footage that we captured on uh, PS4 Pro uh, that we want to take a look at now. And this is the, literally the biggest Call of Duty experience ever. It's like a theme park of everything <laughs> that makes black, black Ops oh, and Blackout and Treyarch. I mean, this thing is incredible. So 
I mean, this must have been a big decision for you guys here at the studio. Yeah, it was a huge decision. I mean, you know, I think we started from this game with a very big vision, a big ambitious vision, which was to make a game that was entirely multiplayer. Um, you can play with your friends and that um, from the ground up everything had to be built to, around social experiences and it's something that is in the, kind of the lifeblood of the studio. I mean we've just been, I think our fans know that we're huge multiplayer focused uh, development house. We love um, playing games online, we, are, we love multiplayer games, we love cooperative experiences. So to make a game that was entirely built around those kind of gameplay experiences you can have with your friends for a long time. Um, was a pretty ambitious thing. It was it was a big change this year. Big change, David. <laughs> you, you got that thousand yard stare going on right now. I mean, you this is your baby. You've been working on this one for quite a while now. Uh, thank you. I mean, it's all of our baby, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's uh, Blackout. Um, spent the first part of the development working on multiplayer and uh, we're focused on multiplayer, competitive multiplayer. I mean, we, we say multiplayer in this building, we mean all of it because all of it. <laughs> all, so you have to get literal, more literal. So competitive multiplayer versus, say, blackout multiplayer versus, say, zombies multiplayer. But so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great honor to, to have the responsibility to try to figure out what blackout looks like. Uh, and... Um, I do have a thousand yard stare. It's yeah, a I mean, day. I mean, this is this, <laughs> this is, is it. A big day. This is it. I mean, we're it's just hours away from the game coming live. So I mean, I, 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 we do these a lot. We've done these for a lot of other uh, game studios, and it's always fascinating just to see how people sort of uh, the, at the studio <laughs> level on launch day. It's yeah, kind they, of a surreal experience. It's it hard totally to explain is. to I think fans at home, but you know, we've been working on this game for three years. Oh, and yeah. In a lot of ways, it's. It's a culmination of a, of a lot of our entire careers work or yep. work here as a studio. Yeah. Over so. a decade together at least with this group of people and then in some cases longer yeah. than that. Is so. this game rated M by the way? Yeah, rated yes. M for Okay, I was just curious. You Although there's the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, for what it's worth, there are lots of great options uh, in the settings menu which allow you to kind of detune some of this, uh, some of the things that would make oh, okay. a game. It's uh, good to know. There's a, a really interesting cartoon shader, for lack of a better term. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I didn't know about that. Zombies. Did Jason yeah. didn't talk about that? No. It's actually really cool. I'm yeah. totally ripping it off for Blackout. <laughs> well, that, that is something I think it's uh, so interesting about uh, Blackout here, because it, this is the biggest Call of Duty experience to date. I mean, it's just a massive map. What's the stats? Uh, how big? 1,500 are... <laughs> times the size of Nuketown, which it's actually probably, you know, give or take, might even be bigger. It, it is. It is. Uh, let's bigger. just go ahead and call it with uh, without legal approval. It's definitely bigger than. <laughs> <laughs> but uh -oh. that was the unit of measurement, and David and the design team, they were like, well, how do you, de how do you de Look at this. define the scale of this thing? And, and so we needed to take a familiar unit of measurement, which was Nuketown. <laughs> Everybody knows. That's so and funny. you can say, hey, what, what does Nuketown feel like? That's let's, great. Let's it's uh, it it's, it's strange, because in game terms, we, you know, when you're a player, we measure things in meters. But in the game engine, we measure things in a thing called a unit, which is almost an inch, or basically an inch. So it's like <laughs> unit of measurement in a Call of Duty game. Uh, for people, let's just go with Nuketown. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the most familiar. It really, familiar, it really is. Uh, uh, if I gave it to you in meters, and you know, would you in would you do series. the math fast enough? Uh, I just I just have to comment. The world? Mm -hmm. I have to comment on this because uh, I know not everyone. You know, there was a very successful beta. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, just, this is just not what I associate with Call of Duty. This uh, camera angle, riding around on vehicles. But the gameplay is totally Call of Duty. Yeah, let's and talk about that. It, it, this is this is a huge shift that you guys have made here. It's a huge evolution, and it must have just there must have been a lot of soul searching, a lot of hard work that went into to just creating this this vehicle centric stuff that we're seeing right now. Sid, I'm really glad you brought this up. Uh, just just to put this in perspective, if you look back at our history and legacy as a developer, we have been doing we put vehicles in multiplayer. Way back, yeah. Right? A World of War had the World tanks, of War right? Was sort of the last Even before. I mean, before, before that, because if you look at um, and Treyarch, originally was uh, a merging of Gray Matter Studios and Treyarch at the time, and um, Gray Matter had done the very first follow-up to the original Call of Duty on PC with United Offensive. That's and right. I played that. It was very good, actually. That was uh, the 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 angle on that game was very vehicular focused. Multiplayer <laughs> was large scale. Large scale combat with lots of vehicles. And that's kind of, I mean, that is the DNA of this development. That is team. awesome. Right. So yeah. it seems really in the abstract, like you haven't seen this uh, lately. Yeah. But in some ways, it's full circle. That is uh, great. Right. And just, you need the right opportunity to have vehicles in a multiplayer game. Uh, and obviously, when you're making a large scale world um, like this, it would make sense to. 
you know, have a, have a car in there somewhere, a vehicle, something, something that, with wheels on it at least. Um, and, and you guys didn't just stop. We saw ATV there. I think yeah. we saw the cargo truck, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the tailpipe as it was getting blasted away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, but the, and the helicopter. There's a helicopter, a little bird. There's a boat. There's a boat. So just, I mean, where did you guys, how did you land on those four vehicles for day one? Land, sea, and air. There you I go. I mean, we, I think there's, uh, the, the map this scale has so much diversity to the terrain and um, the navigation features around that environment. You, we wanted to make sure that there was enough kind of for everybody to do something different um, in how they get across the space from one side to the other. But you don't want to have a, a whole auto show there either, you know, like 15,000 yeah, different. Uh, exactly, right. <laughs> and it's like, um, you know, the, it, they need to be distinction, right? So we had some, uh, some technology that we had been developing that allows us to do what we call internally the moving platform, but this is effectively the fact that you can actually free move around on the back of the cargo truck. That's awesome. Right? We thought that was a Which unique. we've been working on since I think Black Ops 1. <laughs> forever, wow. forever, right? So that's also in the in the boat, the tactical raft. The, uh, those two, that thing was sort of inspiring to us because it, it's just a different way of thinking about that than, than simply being a passenger. Uh, which there's definitely value to, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to advance the agenda on vehicles, advance the idea on what it means to be a passenger uh, that's not necessarily, um, you know, roaming around on the moving platform. So, it, you know, we just, we have some people in this building who are super passionate about vehicles. They're the ones who made it happen. Thank you. <coughs> Speaking, sorry, I, 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 choked think, up. You're I think that, uh, yeah, you're, you're choking me up here. I think that fly that was buzzing around, I just uh, swallowed it. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the beta feedback. Yeah, sure. Because I know this was a big beta for you guys. You actually did two betas, two betas. In, in one year. It looks like we've shipped two games already. Yeah, and then a third one later tonight. So, I mean, <laughs> gee we whiz. I mean, we, uh, just, just as a side note, as Treyarch, we we're always trying to push ourselves forward and do more than we've done the, the previous game. Yeah. Um, we revealed the game earlier this time than we've ever done before. Um, we did our, our betas earlier and we had two betas. So we were trying to always kind of up the game um, to make sure that we're constantly challenging ourselves to deliver the most that we can for the community. This guy. Uh, and it's, I mean, but it, yeah. You're not working hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it is, it is hard work, but you, you know, you've got to, you got to stay kind of at the top of your game and you got to make sure, you're sure you're always working hard to deliver the best thing for your players because that's, that's the heart of the game. And if you can't make them feel rewarded and satisfied and, and like they have a, a, a relationship with us as developers, then we're not working hard enough. So. <laughs> we're not working hard. So we got to cut it short here in just about a minute, but I did want to quickly ask you, for somebody who's new to the Battle Royale sure. space, for somebody who's going to be diving into Blackout later tonight, maybe they know Call of Duty really well, they know Black Ops really well, what's a great strategy to get sort of a head start in Blackout? All right, I got you. So right. first up, if you're just not ever played a Battle Royale game, find, when you get out of the hel with helicopter and you deploy into the world, Go where no one else is going, uh, because you're gonna you're gonna end up getting your face melted. Uh, <laughs> That's that, a technical term there. You're gonna need to spend a little bit of time understanding the core mechanics of the game. So it's best to find some players to play with. If you have them, they'll help you out. You can group and, up in this too. And, yeah. And yeah. Right. With solos, duels, and quads. And if you don't have that, then try to find some place that doesn't look like other people are going to, so you can kind of get the hang of picking up items from the world, especially if you have any multiplayer or zombies experience. Uh, it might take a second to adjust the idea that you're not loaded out, because now Blackout's the game that you're not loaded out in advance, whereas in both multiplayer and zombies, those are important parts of those games. So you're going to have to find things on the ground, and that takes a second to kind of grok if you're not, if you're coming yep. from the other side of the thing. Uh, Dan, you got, what, what did you do to... I say just drop hot. Just go right in the middle, grab a gun as fast as you can and start Die, shooting, you die, and start, <laughs> die and start... Do it over and over again. I mean, like, that's, honestly, that's but, how yeah, I... Yeah, but for what it's worth, um, you know, if you get in the game, over and over. the holding pen, the area that kind of exists, what we call the deployment zone, um, you can actually kind of get a sense of the mechanics. You can find the vehicles, you can pick up the weapons. You're not going to hurt anybody. Uh, so it's basically a way for you to simulate what will happen, and that's kind of a fun thing to be able to do it's awesome. uh, while you're trying to learn the game. So even when you're in that thing, holding pen, which is not going to be waiting very long, so we'll be playing people, uh, grab something, like learn something. Yeah, and uh, stay alive. It's probably good advice, too. Uh, guys, we're going to be hearing more from you because we're going to have a new look at multiplayer, including the first look at a new map uh, coming to multiplayer called Icebreaker. You don't want to miss that. It'll be uh, here in just a sec. But I also want to remind everybody, go to PlayStation.com slash BO4 because we've got some sweet, sweet giveaway action and uh, some sweepstakes you can enter, uh, including you can enter to win one of these bad boys right here. That is the Mystery Box Edition of Black Ops 4. Uh, we are counting down to launch. It's just uh, hours away, and we'll be right back with a first look at a new map for multiplayer. So stay with us. Give us 
with the fire, we'll give them hell. Let's tango! Play new content first on PS4. Hey, y'all, we're back. Uh, we're going to have a new look at a multiplayer map you haven't seen yet for Black Ops 4 coming right up. It's called Icebreaker. Uh, and we're back with Dan and David at Treyarch. We are counting down the final hours till Black Ops 4 launches later tonight on PlayStation Store. There's still time to pre-order and preload so you can get going right away. Uh, and, yeah, we don't have, uh, look at that, look at that clock. Are you guys nervous about this? I mean, it, it, just hours to go yeah, till this. Thing. This is your baby, this. right? We got, we got this. this. I, I mean, it, I, in the morning, walk, walk going into work, I was like, it's actually really weirdly low key, like it's any other day in a way. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Well, we've, I mean, we've got a lot of practice. We've tested the servers on two big betas, so we've had, we've hit pretty ma massive scale already. Okay. Um, so we're, we're hoping for a smooth launch. We've been trying to get as, everything as prepped as we possibly can. I'm going can. to a party tonight. So well, there you I'm, go. I'm not yeah. even worried. Yeah, you're not worried at all. I don't, I don't I blame you. I will be partying here, making sure everything is good. Not me. Speaking of parties, uh, there is still time to enter to win some lavish prizes. Uh, PlayStation.com slash BO4. Go there. We've got some freebies you can get, avatars, themes, really cool stuff like that. But you can also enter to win the mystery box version of the game. That's this guy sitting right here. There's an opportunity to enter to win a PS4 Pro as well as a limited edition of the game. So make sure you get in on that because it's a limited time thing. But I want to talk about the 800-pound gorilla, and that is multiplayer. You guys are known for this. Call of Duty has this incredible multiplayer mode. the competitive multiplayer. The classic uh, is back. And uh, better than it. ever. Never better than it. ever. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. And we're going to check out some footage, actually, of a new map. Uh, that's Icebreaker. Hasn't been seen yet. And it's been captured on a PS4 Pro. Uh, so let's see that right now. Looking great. OK, I like this. I'm getting uh, the terror vibes out of this. You know, did you guys see that show? <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, this is an exciting map. And I think that it's the one, it's the last map I think that we've shown anybody. But yeah. um, it is, um, it's kind of set. An Arctic snowy environment is obviously, and um, the, the kind of fiction behind it is this lost nuclear submarine, U.S. nuclear submarine, cool. that um, a Russian special forces team has come in to, to try to recapture um, the hidden uh, elements from it. And um, hmm. so it's di you know it's very different. We we try to make sure that our all of our maps cover a wide range of landscapes and color palettes and yeah. sizes and. Uh, and layouts, and this one is just a very unique. There's a lot of underwater. Um, there's something interesting. The, the the fight through the sub is very different. It's tight. It's close uh. quarters, very tight, constrained space, but it has multiple levels on it. So you're sort of in this multi-level submarine on the interior, um, and part of it's uh, partially submerged. So it's got a lot of really kind of different. Um, cat and mouse elements, which are a lot of fun in that, uh, that center area inside the sub. Um, but yeah, this is exciting. Look at this, I just love this stuff. It never gets old, does it? <laughs> we actually added something, so if you're in the water for too long because it's a frigid environment, uh, your, your screen is going to fog over and, and like sort of have ice crystallized on it. Kind of so obscure your vision. A little bit, yeah, it's a little bit of a gameplay thing. Don't stay in the water too long. This is cool. I, I'm digging this. This is the first time we're seeing Icebreaker here, and uh, it's, got a, it's got a nice atmosphere to it, too. Very bleak and inhospitable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is a, a day one map uh, for yeah, Black Ops 4? Absolutely. Um, one of the things I want to ask you folks as well while I got you here is, uh, I mean, Black Ops 3, major high point for the series. Black Ops 4, getting it back to boots on the ground. Specialists have gotten some tweaks. I mean, what was the overall goal, though, from a studio level uh, for multiplayer here in Black Ops 4? Team from tactical. Yeah? Yeah. You know, fun to bring, watch. Bring a more tactical vibe to it. We wanted to bring some pacing, um, bring a little bit more layers of strategy. I yeah. think that's, it, it is still the, that fast, fluid, um, responsive, um, Call of Duty multiplayer experience that people know and love, but we also want to bring bring some depth to it. I mean, depth was a, re a really big part of our our pillars for this this um, mm -hmm. this new multiplayer this year. Some variety in the combat pacing, uh, new opportunities there, like with the healing and 
uh, all the work that we put in the weapon system. Oh, that's me. DJ Vaughn. Yes! yes! Playing that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Uh, you don't even know how good I am, son. I love that manual healing system. I, I just, I, it just kind of adds this delicious little thrill of, of kind of risk. Um, yeah. it, it's just cool, and it's, it's actually really interesting too, because Call of Duty was really on the front lines way back when for adding that sort of innovative ability to kind of recover from injuries. Uh, so again, like to your point, kind of going full circle, but I think it really adds like kind of a nice wrinkle. To sure, I mean, we certainly didn't go as far as health packs on the ground. That sure. Up. Oh wait, that's a different part of the game that we did do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was important, I think, for Dan and all of us, um, you know, to, to always look at this loop, you know, in multiplayer, you spawn, you run, you get into a fight, you live and you keep going, or you die and you do it again. Yep. So you have to find interesting new ways to sort of spike how mm -hmm. that would work and to make variety. Uh, and you have to do that without ruining that loop as yep. well. And I'll tell you, that's uh, that can be challenging. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and I know, you know, there's a specialist uh, kind of made their emergence in Black Ops 3. Yeah. Um, and they've been tweaked a little bit here for Black Ops 4, so tell me a little bit about the philosophy around how to sort of balance these specialists. So the specialists are really kind of the, one of the, the key elements to adding that layer, those layers of depth mm -hmm. and tactical gameplay and, um, and different types of strategy and how you approach a, uh, an engagement. Um, each one is, is meant to sort of fill a role, although it's not a hard role. It's, yeah. it's just got to be fun to do as a player. Um, we design them all. Um, to not only fill, fill a role on a team, but also just feel good as an individual player. So if you uh, want to lone wolf it, you, you're going to, uh, to have fun as, a, as an individual player, but you're going to be passively helping your team no matter what. Yep. And that was kind of one of our design uh, philosophies. I mean, Vaughn and I talked about this early on, is um, this concept of what's in it for me. It's like, if I'm a player, I'm not gonna necessarily, not every player is gonna wanna go out and actively help their team to be a, a, a team player, but. I try to, but I just, sometimes I just get, I get distracted, you, wanna, you know? Yeah, sometimes you just wanna just have that, <laughs> that, that pure fun. And um, I think that, but, but you have to, it has to be fun and it has to be helpful um, to your team whether you're trying to or not. And they're complementary, right? It's not, you know, Dan's talking a lot about how it's not a necessity, but it's also if you do manage to assemble that team or you do manage to play with people, and this is a team multiplayer game, if there ever was one, no matter what part of the game you're playing, there's certain combinations of specialists that kind of work well and uh, with each other and you'll yep. find your groove. So uh, everybody can still lone wolf. We, we would not destroy that, but there's strength in numbers too. Yep, and you can, oh, yeah. you can keep it sort of old school too if you want to, if you want to just continue to play kind of the way it's been in the, in the prior games, uh, grab grenades, do all that kind of stuff, that's all there as well. I think plenty of people are gonna do that. Yeah. It's crate of class, sorry. It's because of crate of class, to be clear. That's what keeps it from being uh, too rule centric. Yeah. So when you can create your own class. Oh yeah. You can do anything you want. The specialist that governs, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's sorry. Uh, and we're just super excited to see, um, especially like what the you know what the pros do on the competitive um, oh, yeah. circuit for this game because there's, I think there is it's intentionally designed to have a lot of depth to it and, and I think that when you start um, seeing it um, played at the highest levels of competition, you're going to see that depth come out in new ways and even ways that we hadn't expected ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited that in for control, that. Uh, during the beta period where top slayers would not necessarily win if they weren't even trying to play the mode. Hmm. So I think that was a good sign that we were getting getting where we wanted to be. I mean, eSports obviously a big focus for you guys as well. So I mean, uh, it, will be, it, it, will be, uh, it will be interesting to see what these pros do. I and mean. we're changing the format this year for the first time in a long time, 5v5. Five five five. Um, which wow. I think, um, from our point of view, we're just trying, we want to make sure that the game that you're watching in all forms is the game that you're playing at home as, as much as possible, because I think that's what makes it exciting. Um, like, like we said, we've said many times, one of our core pillars was we want the game to be as fun to watch as it is to play. Mm. And that, co that covers all modes of the game. It so. would have been easy to do 4 on 4. I mean, Blackout's 4 on 4, Zombies is 4 on 4, although Blackout will do lots of configurations. Uh, but the pub, the pub, or the public, is used to 6 on 6, so uh, everybody's got to meet in the middle. Uh, and when we actually <laughs> started with that number, it actually hel helped us sort of understand what we would do differently about map design, a lot of things. So it's not, that change is not arbitrary uh, remotely, and it's in fact significantly impacted a lot of other things you decide to do. I know you guys have put a ton of work actually into the sort of feel of the weapons as well, the ballistics. I mean, Call of Duty, Black uh, Black Ops. I have, I keep wanting to say Blackout and Black Ops. It's <laughs> it's torture. <laughs> but uh, Black Ops, Call of Duty, known tell, for tell me this about it. incredible weapon handling. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys put a huge amount of emphasis just in kind of revamping that system here for Black Ops Four. Uh, Black Ops Four. So <laughs> you did it. Yeah, I, you know, it's like don't say elephant, don't say elephant. Uh, tell me a little bit about just that approach, though. Like, how how do you make something so good that's just 
pretty much unanimously seen as like best in class. How do you make that even Very better? carefully. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I think, uh, you know, we, we kind of approached the weapons with the philosophy that we did with the specialists. We want to make everything have a purpose and a role in the game and have it feel like it stands out as a hero. Um, that each gun um, has its own identity and that you, when you pick up a gun, you're going to feel the difference between that and another gun. And we want to make sure there's enough space between the weapons and their tuning and their roles so that they all um, can really really define that niche that they sit in. Um, and uh, that kind of fought, carries through all of our design mechanics. Like, you know, this is the first game where we haven't done all the attachments the same per weapon class. Mm. Um, each gun has its own unique set of attachments. Some of them have operator mods, which make them really powerful for that uh, for that role that they play. Now, allowing you to optimize into that gun uh, core attribute or ability. Like, if it's the fastest reloading gun in the game, you shouldn't be able to go get attachments on some other gun that then make it the fastest reloading gun in the game. Otherwise, you're not doing that. You're not making it special. Uh, They're almost like characters, these guns. Yeah, they actually have the brands, uh, and we actually think of them that way. Talk about what is the brand identity of this weapon. It's a part of the design philosophy and the art uh, process. But, uh, but also, beyond just sort of the design philosophy, I mean, at the engine level, um, sort of all the things that go into making guns feel good, that's not one thing. It's a hundred things. And you have to look at every one of those very, very carefully, whether it's the effects and how you treat muzzle flashes or uh, you know, how the ballistics work. Uh, we don't, we turn over those stones. There's always something you can do better, always. You got the best play cam again. I am amazing. I think they're making up for the fact that they killed me all those times in the trailer. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I know Treyarch's been working on this thing for a long, long time. We're just hours away from it being unleashed. Let's go. The world with PlayStation Let's go. Store. Yeah, I know. It's almost time. Uh, very exciting. And I really appreciate, and all of us really appreciate you. you setting aside a couple minutes to chat with us here on Thank a busy. Uh, Welcome to the party, man. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. Uh, maybe I'll jump on here. Maybe you got some, uh, some other it. stuff running here. But I, I can help you. I want to I wanna thank both of you. I want to thank Treyarch and congratulate you. The game is looking really good. It's huge. It's ambitious. And uh, I'm, I, for one, am very excited. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, man. It's and, good to see you. Uh, good, great to see you, as always. And thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, one more time, I want to plug that PlayStation.com slash BO4. Uh, I think we got some graphics here. Uh, there's just a lot of great stuff that you can enter for a chance to win, including this mystery box right here. There's a PS4 Pro. There's a limited edition tin version of Black, o uh, Black Ops 4. I'm very sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of freebie stuff you Black can pick Black Out 5, well. coming soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and also there is a very special charity event going on right now. Go to twitch.tv slash the race and uh, help vets. Why not? It's a, it's a good thing to do and we can all get behind that one. So uh, from all of us here to all of you out there, thank you so much for joining us and we'll, we'll see you out there later tonight. <laughs>